let's just start, uh, introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Blake Geddes. I've been in Alaska since 94. I separated from the active duty Air Force after 10 and a half years, and I knew if I ever got to Alaska, this is the place I would probably stay. And here I am 25 years later. Well, we start over here in the trail and I walk you towards the cabin and it kind of opens up. This is the original cabin and there's been improvements made to it. I put a new floor in it, jacked it up, new stove, new plumbing, and this is what we used. Uh, probably the first thing I did was tore down the old outhouse and build a new outhouse. Important. Uh, priorities. Yes, priorities. And then uh, over time, I took a little bit of time to decide how I wanted to lay the property out. And as you can see, there's a lot more buildings now than just this original cabin. And it took about 14 years to build it the way it is now. I like to build, you can tell, but I also like to disconnect. This is off the grid. There's no television sets. There's no computers. Yeah, I mean, it's a sanctuary. In 2012, a friend of mine came down just to get, it was in November, just to get stuff ready for the trapping season, it opens up in November. And we took the boat up river and, and uh, to an area that we had planned on trapping and, and that's, that's when I had my accident. So I had, set up my snares in this area and I was just walking back and I got to right about here and I hear the uh, a brown bear wolfed at me and I turned and the bear was on the other side of this stuff. I could see the total profile and it looked like a great big male. So I got squared up with it, got my arms up and I just yelled, yelled at it so it knew I was human and it paused and then it faced me and then it came up off the ground on its hind legs, put its head back and gave a big roar. And then it hit the ground and started coming. The bear turned that corner, came off the ground. I jumped and came off my left foot and stepped inside. A big brown blur shot past me. As it went by, the bear rotated and reached behind with its far arm and hooked my left eye. But what doesn't make any sense was the claw it started from the front and ripped back. It came out and jumped over top my uh, artery and vein, reinserted and finished cutting around the back. Had it gone right through, I would have been dead probably in 15 seconds. And then uh, I was on the ground. So I sat up right into the mouth of the bear and my entire head was in its mouth. Uh, the top canines were on the back of my head and the, the bottom teeth had me hooked underneath the jaw and I couldn't get my head out of the mouth. Finally, it relaxed the bite enough that I was able to pull my head out just, and as it did that, uh, the uh, canines came down and cut through my forehead and took my nose off and ripped this open and I thought I lost that eye because when that flap came down it filled that eye up with blood. I could still see on the left, I could see on my right eye. And it, it kept working on me and I'm getting lower and lower until I'm all the way on my back. Uh, the bear bites my left or my right knee. So much pressure that it shattered my uh, fibula and its mouth's open, it's dripping blood, uh, my blood, and then it just explodes off the ground and gives me a double chest pump on my sternum. Uh, it didn't break anything, and that winded me, and I had nothing left in the tank. Uh, the bear got really close, just inches in my face, and just stared at me. I didn't move, and it turned and walked that direction. 
the whole ordeal lasted not more than probably two minutes. Um, uh, the result of that being my left quadricep was severed down to the femur, my right fibula was uh, fractured, significant wounds in my face, my nose was almost removed and hanging by the right nostril, uh, and then other scars just throughout my body. Uh, I had to walk out of that with the help of my friend and was um, made it to an ambulance and then was life flighted from Central Peninsula Hospital up to Anchorage. In uh, 2012, watch out, Porter. I'm just thinking about Kathleen. Mm. I dated her from my sophomore year in high school. All through my college years at the uh, Air Force Academy, got married soon after. She was the uh, president of the Alaska Nurses Association. Uh, she had some work injuries that uh, caused her health to deteriorate pretty rapidly uh, to the point that she uh, didn't get out of the house much. Her blood pressure would drop all the time. And I had to go shopping, go grocery shopping and do some other stuff. And uh, when I got home, uh, so I came in the, the door, I said something to her and there was no response and I carried groceries upstairs and I saw her, she was, uh, she was not conscious. Uh, she had passed out before and had other issues and I had revived her a few times in the previous couple of years and I, I worked on her for a while and, and uh, called 911 and uh, the, um, Responding paramedic turns out to be a friend of mine. Eric helped me work on her for a little bit, and he finally said, Blake, she's gone. I just held her. I held her for probably an hour. until they had to take her. Uh, one week later then I had my mom was in town and my friends were kind of surrounding me to keep an eye on me um, after Kathleen had passed and came down to the cabin uh, to just get some quiet time while we were down here. The, the Funny River fire was getting closer and closer to the point that it took action. In southern Alaska today, a wind whip fire has burned nearly 250 square miles in the Kenai Peninsula. CNN reports officials have now ordered evacuations of 1,000 structures in the area after authorities worried about the safety of people traveling for the Memorial Day weekend. So I had friends bringing pumps down and, and I, I was saturating the ground pretty well. And I talked to, and flying, we'd go up and fly and look at it and see where it's coming. So we were flooding the back, the fire was coming from the south, flooding the back area. And we were working on it for a few days and the fire's getting closer. I was back cutting and you could hear this roaring, like an airplane roaring, you know, that jet engine sound. And you could look up and you could see just a wall of, of black. So a friend of mine, I said, can you go down the trail and see how close this is? And he was gone for about five minutes and he came running back and he said, we have to go. I didn't think there was any chance at all this was gonna survive. It was, uh, it was just all consuming. And where we stood on the far bank, you could watch it, it was as if, 
uh, the flames were determined to hit this particular piece of property. This place is more than just a bunch of buildings. You, you, I couldn't replace it. I, I don't think I'd have the energy to replace it. And if it, everything was just incinerated, I don't know that I'd, I would even try. Right. And I'd put everything into this. And at this point, I'm thinking, it's gone and it's just stuff though. Yeah. It, it's, it means a lot to me, but everybody got out safe right. and it's stuff. But it was just one more loss. Everybody wanted to come back and look at the place and see what, what was going on. And I took one person with me because I don't want to jeopardize anybody. And we came and there were fires, small fires burning around inside the perimeter. Everything outside was gone. At the end, there was not one structure that was even cinched, nothing. This is about where the flame stopped. And you can see this side of the tree is untouched. Uh, there's no char or anything. And the fire came from that direction. And if you look to the other side, it's just incinerated. Like if somebody had a blowtorch on it. And then for 26 miles, everything is gone. Wow. So it's headed towards the river and it engulfed everything around here except for this little piece of property. Yes, the postage stamp. It's incredible. It might seem counterintuitive, but the fire actually kind of renewed my faith. That's essentially a rebirth in that uh, I, I want to be a better man than I was in the past. I'm remarried and have a wonderful relationship and not to dwell on things in the past that I can't change, but the wake up of look at everything that you still do have in front of you and to appreciate that. That was the catalyst for renewing my faith. <laughs>